I had one of my viewers ask me about how the uh, MSO 5000 series Rigol scope uh, handles FFTs. Is, is, it, uh, is it better? I did a video once on an old Rigol scope and I was not happy at all with the FFT function. Um, and Rigol's made a bunch of improvements, so let's take a look at those today. So uh, we're going to be comparing this uh, FFT spectrum anal analysis with an HP uh, uh, spectrum analyzer analysis. Um, so we're going to choose a frequency that both of them can measure. So we're going to use 100 kilohertz. So that's within the range of both of these instruments. And we're going to have the uh, spectrum analyzer over there. You can see that I've got an AM modulated signal here. I've got a 100, a 100 kilohertz uh, uh, tone with a 5, or a car I should say a 100 kilohertz carrier with a 500 hertz tone. All right. And so uh, you can see that we have uh, AM modulation on, on the signal here. All right, so what I'm gonna do uh, is that I'm gonna do uh, some uh, frame capturing over on the uh, uh, computer, and I'll, I'll superimpose that in the video against the uh, spectrum analyzer so we can look at both uh, kind of side by side. Okay, let's do some math. Everybody loves math. Um, so let's see here, let's start with, uh, an example here. Let me let me zoom down so you can read it. So we are going to start with uh, an example where we're measuring 10 milliwatts. Okay, 10 milliwatts. So what is 10 milliwatts in dBm? Well, dBm is 10 log of the milliwatts. Okay, and so you put the 10 here, and then you can calculate dBm. So that's what we did here. Put in the 10. So log of 10 is 1 times 10 is 10. So it's plus 10. Okay. So plus 10 dBm is 10 milliwatts. All right. So we're interested in the differences between dB milliwatts and dB volts. Okay. So what's the difference between watts and volts? Well, watts and volts is like this. V squared over R is watts. Okay. And so your R is always 50 ohms. And so you have V squared over 50. And in this case, we have 10 milliwatts. That's 0 0.01 watts. Okay. So this is what we have. And so we take 50, we multiply it on this side, and then we still have a square over here, so we take a square root. And so we get 0 0.707 volts, that's volts RMS, um, is the volts for 10 milliwatts. Okay, so 10 milliwatts is plus 10 dBm, it's also 0 0.707 volts. Well, we, want, we, we don't want volts, we want dB volts, okay? So dB volts is a little bit different than dB watts. So because of the square term, if you have a two in the logarithm, you can bring it out to the front. And so dB volts are 20 log instead of 10 log, okay? So it's 20 log of, of your voltage ratio, or, or, or the ratio is always volts over volts of one volt because you always reference to one volt. Here you're always referencing to one milliwatt. Here you're always referencing to one volt. So it's just log of volts, all right? So we have 20 log of 0 0.707 in our case, and that's minus three, minus 3.01 dB volts, okay? So we had plus 10 dBm is equal to minus three dB volts, okay? And uh, because they're logarithms, they always track and so we can, we can use this equation here. We have 10 dBm equals minus three dB volts. That means that if you ever have the reason to convert dBm's to dB volts, you just subtract 13. It's always 13 because the difference here is 13. You have plus 10 here and you have minus three here, okay? And you can either bring the minus three over here and you get plus 13, or you can bring the 10 over here and you get minus 10. Anyway, you get dBm's minus 13 is dB volts, okay? So like if you had zero dBm, you would have minus 13 dB volts. Or if you had 10 plus 10 dBm, you'd have minus three dB volts, okay? So that's the way you, you do it. Now, this spectrum analyzer does not display in dBm, but it does display in dB volts. So all we have to take is we have to take our dB volts and add 13 to get dBm's. So that's how we're going to do it.
Okay, so uh, over here on the uh, HP analyzer, you can see uh, we have a uh, 100 kilohertz uh, center, and we have two um, peaks. We can change the uh, resolution bandwidth, um, and the machine's going to slow way down because it needs to uh, it needs to go slow. Uh, so here it is going through its 30 hertz filter. The, the previous one was a 100 hertz filter. This one is a 30 hertz filter, so you can see the uh, you can see the three waveforms. If we want to know what the peak is on those three waveforms, we can uh, we can put a line and then we can say, uh, tell me what the values of uh, the peaks above that line are. And so we get a little table down here. We get minus five and a half, minus seventeen and a half, and minus seventeen and a half for the for the three peaks. Okay. So uh, let's go over to the uh, to the Rigol. And we go to uh, FFT here on the on the front panel, and we turn on FFT one, and we'll turn that on to channel one, and we will then go to more. We will say instead of so the the nice thing about it now is you can set a start stop frequency or you can set a center span frequency. So we'll set the center at uh, one hundred kilohertz and we'll set the span at um, 5 kilohertz so we the two will match so now we should get a picture here and we can throw away channel one because we don't want to see it anymore now the reason that it's such a crude looking image is because um, our resolution bandwidth isn't very good and our sampling isn't very good. All right. So the resolution bandwidth, it actually is reporting down at the bottom there at 100 hertz, but the sampling is not very good. So what you need to do is you need to take your horizontal control and right now it's set to one millisecond. And so we're going to slow it, uh, slow it down here. We'll slow it, slow it to 500 milliseconds and, and uh, let's see what happens. All right, somehow I'd push the stop run button or something's pressed the stop run button. Anyway, I think you can see we have, uh, we have three spikes here and uh, they are incurring at the right spots, all right? And um, they're very, very narrow. That's because our resolution bandwidth is one hertz. If you see there in the lower, lower right, um, it says one hertz. So now we can change the um, resolution bandwidth here by I'm turning the horizontal sweep knob, okay? So now I'm at 10 milliseconds of sweep, and you can see our horizontal uh, resolution bandwidth now is 10 hertz. So, so there we go. So the pictures kind of look the same now, right? The, the shape of the peaks are a little bit funny. That's because of the shape of the filter. So in the HP instrument, the shapes of the filters are a, 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 a uh, analog filter. They're uh, an LC filter or a crystal filter. And in the FFT, it's a digital filter. Now we can uh, change things a bit, but uh, it doesn't really matter if you're looking at certain things, you're just interested in the peaks and then you can kind of deal with the shape of things. You just have to realize that the shape of things is not the thing that you're measuring. It's actually the shape of the filter that you're measuring. So you can see that if we uh, reduce the resolution bandwidth, then the filter kind of goes away, right? It doesn't, it doesn't matter anymore. Now, one thing that we can do here, uh, well, first of all, we should notice that uh, we have a resolution bandwidth of 30 hertz on the HP instrument. It's sweeping very, very slow. We have a resolution bandwidth of five hertz on the Rigol, and it's sweeping much, much, much faster. So the Rigol is, is winning on, on, on things like this. Let's set the resolution bandwidth up so we're going a little bit faster. Just take a look at it. All right. So let's see if the peaks compare, all right? So on the Rigol scope, uh, we can hit cursor and we can turn the cursor on and we can go to manual and we can select the source as math. And now we get some cursors. We can set the uh, X. We can move things out of the way because we don't care about X. So let's just... Uh, Oops, uh, let's just move the X's out of the way. And then we'll do Y's. 
and we can move the y up until we're reading that peak that peak reading there okay so we're about about there right so it's measuring minus 19.26 db volts all right and if we look at the hp peak 1 is measuring 5.42 so I'm going to do math on my calculator here, and I'm going to say 5.42 plus 13, oops, 5.42 plus 13 is 18.4, and we're measuring 19.6. So they're, they're quite close. In dBs, it's, uh, I can kind of even move it, guess it a little bit better, maybe right there is perfect, so that's 20, but yeah. Anyway, you get the idea. If we take a look at the other peaks, uh, the peaks down here, the little ones, they're happening at about minus 32.6. So uh, 32.6, 13, that's 19.6, 19, 19 and the HP is measuring 17.3. 17 so, you know, they're, 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 they're close. They're not perfect. Uh, absolute numbers aren't great on spectrum analyzers anyway, but uh, they're very, very close to, to, to giving you the information um, that you need. I don't know what the specifications are on either machine, really, for absolute accuracy. I think the HP is good within 3 dB for absolute accuracy, something like that. Maybe it's better than that, but um, maybe it's 0.3 dB. I don't remember now, and I'm not sure what the raggle is. Uh, but I think that gives you a good idea. So we have, um, on the HP, we're able to change the vertical. We can set a reference level, and we can set a, a division per a, 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 a dB per division, right? Well, since we're operating in volts, we can go here to, we'll go back to the FFT, uh, we can set the scale. We'll set the scale to 20. So on a spectrum analog, norm normally, normally you would set that to 10, um, but we're in dB volts, so we're going to set it to 20. And now the two, and now the two should match. Um, so if we take the HP, and uh, it's operating very, very slow now. Um, if we do a peak search and peak to peak to reference level, let's see here, marker, let's see, peak search, and uh, now I don't see it, marker function, uh, nope, mark, oh, here we go, marker to, marker to reference level, there we go, so I've put it at the very, very tippy top, and if I do that with the um, right goal, I use the offset and I can set the, and now I've got the trigger in the way. I can't see the darn trigger. Uh, let's see, let's move that trigger out of the way. And I just changed my resolution bandwidth, which I didn't want to do. Oh dear. What did I just do? Oh, there we go go back here to uh, something reasonable. There we go. So I'll go here to offset and I will change it to the little tippy top peak there. So my peak is happening right at the top of the uh, screen and then the other two are just above the line and in the, and in the HP the about right on the line or maybe a little below the line. So yeah they don't they don't exactly match. They don't exactly match. Now which one's more accurate? You know, the Rigol might be. Um, at these frequency levels, the, uh, the Rigol might actually be giving us better numbers. Anyway, I hope that was a, a quick comparison and gave you an idea, a quick comparison of the functions of the Rigol FFT now. They're much, much better. Um, they do allow absolute measurements and dB volts. You can convert to dBm if you want. Um, they, uh, you can set start-stop. You can set center span. 
you can set scale, you can set offset and stuff. Um, there's a button here called auto setting. Let's, let's, let's hit auto setting and see what happens. Yeah, so you don't want to do that. <laughs> it, just, it just goes nuts. It says, what are you looking at? What are you trying to do? And so it set our center at two and a half megahertz and our span at five megahertz. So, all right, I wanted to show one more feature here on the Rigel before we uh, end this video. I think we've seen enough. Um, so I showed peak detection on the HP instrument and said, hey, that's a fancy feature. Well, the Rigel has it too. So let's go to, let's see, where is it? I think it's in cursors. Um, manual, more, nope, it's not there. It must be under FFT. So let's go to the FFT and yeah, under FFT uh, options, uh, there is something called peak search. So we will turn on peak search and you can ask it for how many, how many peaks do you want to measure? And we want to measure three peaks and then you can do the peak search. You can turn it on and then you need to set the threshold so that I had that line on the uh, HP instrument. Well, this has a line too. So we'll, we'll lower the line down. And there we go. It's picked up. Uh, it's picked up the three peaks, and it's giving us a table of uh, frequency and amplitude. So yeah, um, it's pretty much a full-featured spectrum analyzer now. I'm not still crazy about the user interface, and I'm not crazy about some of the language. It's not spectrum analyzer language. It's it's um, uh, oscilloscope language. So they they probably just haven't. The, the design team just hasn't built a spectrum analyzer, but you can do what you need to do and it seems to work it seems to work great um so i'm pretty happy with this one i don't know how far up in frequency you can go it does have um it's running at 20 mega samples per second so nyquist would say you know you're 10 megahertz you're really really pushing it i don't think it would operate there but i would think it would operate you know around a megahertz just fine and then below a megahertz is where it's going to shine and uh, everything should uh everything should be good 20 million oh wait a minute it's 20 million 20 million samples per second yeah maybe it does go faster let's try that okay i've set my uh, generator to um 10 megahertz so let's go there it is let's turn that off get it out of the way okay um and let's turn off the cursors get those out of the way all right um and then let's play with the resolution bandwidth let's try to go down to 20 yeah see it's 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 stopping um, so it, the FFT uh, mathematics won't allow you to go above 10 megahertz. Um, so let's try to measure 5 megahertz. So let's go back to FFT. And center at 5 megahertz. Yeah, there we go. So... Uh, yeah, don't go above 10 megahertz, but everything below 10 megahertz seems to be operating just, uh, just, just great. So yeah, it's a nice little, uh, a nice little feature. Um, great for things like audio work, um, or looking at noise components, even in digital circuits and stuff, uh, trying to figure out what's going on. So, uh, yeah, FFTs are here to stay. They're, uh, they're a very good tool.